Annie Pumphrey. I was a trustee for the Nebraska State Historical Society Foundation from 2014 through 2020. And I was kind of active, at least donating money and trying to get involved even before 2014. I've always been a big history buff and since I am a native of Valentine, Nebraska and a graduate of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, uh, Nebraska history was something that I was always interested in too. People don't realize when it originated. It originated in 1941. Uh, there was a post mistress for the Valentine Post Office uh, since the 1930s. Her name was Marguerite C. for Claire, I believe, Helps. And she was the one who is credited with having started it all in 1941. She would receive Valentines from all over the world, like in big manila envelopes. People wanted them to be mailed from Valentine, so they would have a postmark for a town that was named the same as the holiday. So she was, wheels were churning in her brain about what to do about this. And she, I think she was a bit of an artist also, uh, as you can see from the uh, 1940 artwork that I have on one cover. This is not a cachet because it's a year before the Caché program started, but it's a rather gorgeous hand-painted cover and it's been signed by her, M.C. Phelps Postmaster, uh, and it's got the February 14th postmark. So it's one of my favorite collected items um, that I got on eBay a few years back that I was just totally thrilled with. And one of the things I'm particularly thrilled with is I'm a left-hander and I can tell from her signature on this piece of artwork and also from an earlier um, envelope that was 1937 where she was just signing her name for the post office dedication, another philately thing to collect a cover of post office dedications. Uh, the handwriting matches and it's clearly a lefty that wrote them because there's quite a backward slant to that. The cachet program got started in 1941 along with a lot of other Valentine's Day events. The town basically decided to make the most they could out of their holiday. So that very first big celebration featured a coronation of a king and queen uh, who were chosen from the townspeople. It's, they're now chosen from the high school and have been for many decades. But when it first started, they were local townspeople. Uh, there was also a tea party at, for the ladies at the Marion Hotel in Valentine that featured heart-shaped tarts along with their tea. Uh, the men could be down at the Jewel Theater on Main Street watching the Rose Bowl that Nebraska had actually played in that year, but of course no one had a TV back in 1941, so getting to see the footage that they'd missed uh, was really a big attraction. And then there was this cachet program. Unfortunately, later in 1941, Pearl Harbor happened and the, a lot of that stuff disappeared permanently or disappeared at least for several years. I have not been able to find a 19, any cachet after 1941 until 1947. I believe that there weren't any. It was considered inappropriate, but maybe there's at least a 1946 one because the war was over and I just haven't been able to find it yet. The Saint and City greetings that Marguerite Phelps designed in 1941 uh, looked the same in 1947 when um, looked almost the same in 1947 as what she had designed, but they'd added the year at that point, which I think was a very nice touch. I like the ones that are dated better than the ones that are not. So there weren't any changes uh, till 1947. And then after that, we jump forward to 1949, they'd added the month and the day. So it then said February 14th, 1949, but it was still the basic Saint and City one that uh, Ms. Phelps had designed in 41. The big change was in 63. Uh, when I was growing up in the 60s in Valentine, all around the town, there were these really attractive milepost signs. They were a red heart with a big white crossbeam at an angle and another little crossbeam not at an angle down below it. And they told how many miles it was to Valentine from wherever you happened to be. So anybody who knew Valentine at all recognized that sign instantly. And someone had the idea to use that as the new cachet for the Valentine's program. They changed it a little bit uh, to say the month, day, and year instead of the mileage. And then it says crossroads of the sand hills. But that was a really 
really nice design and it stayed in place for many years and for all i know it's still available this morning in valentine I, it was definitely a popular one they had special ones in 1967 for the state centennial they had a special one in 1976 designed by a rather well-known local artist named Mildred Hansen, which features the heart and the city name at the top and then the state map below it, month, day, year, and then a yucca plant for good measure below that. It's gorgeous, but it didn't actually fit on a lot of envelopes. So it did not stay around for too long because it was just too big. Then there was another special cache for the centennial of the city itself in 1984. So that's a, and that thing that looks like a spider in the center of it is actually a yucca plant. I don't think it's as well designed as it could be, but uh, that's an attractive one. And then starting in the year 2000 is when lots of them started pro proliferating. There were contests uh, for students and this little girl with the valentines falling out of her mailbox has been a really popular one. I think it's very attractive, but it doesn't have the month, day, year, which I really miss. And this is one of my personal favorites, uh, this heart with an arrow through it and the Nebraska. I just think it's really striking looking. I haven't been able to find out much about where it came from, but it was around for many years also and may still be for all I know. So basically this is a, this program really appeals to me because I'm really into recognizing women's contribution to American history and of course to Nebraska history. And so I was so thrilled when I started researching this uh, back about a decade ago to find out that the entire program, which is familiar to so many Valentine and Cherry County residents, uh, but they don't know when it started and they don't know who started it. It was actually started by a Valentine woman who um, had been the postmistress and came up with the whole idea herself. I feel like Marguerite Phelps doesn't get enough recognition for this contribution. I checked this morning and the person who answered the phone at the Valentine Post Office said, oh yeah, I thought maybe the pandemic would cause it to have shut down because the way it works, um, you, you can mail your Valentines from anywhere in the world in the big manila envelope and you know have postage on them and the Chamber of Commerce and the post office team up to get them all stamped with a special cachet and then sent off again. But you can also, if you are a local, just go into the post office and you know the cachets are all lined up on a counter right there in the lobby. So you can check them all out, practice them on some scratch paper. There's a red stamp pad for a white envelope. There's a black stamp pad for a red envelope. Uh, and they've got a lot of them now. Uh, I, in the early days, there was just the one, and for quite a while after that, when they had new ones, there was just one, but then at some point they started proliferating, so there's lots of them now. And the, post, the person who answered the phone at the post office this morning said that the pandemic had not stopped it, the caches were sitting out there on the counter right now. So, so that was a brief history of how we got here from, from 1941 to the pandemic. <laughs>